The key states for barley production in the United States are Colorado, Idaho, Minnesota, Montana, North Dakota being the largest, Oregon, Washington, and Wyoming. They're all the northern tier states along the Canadian border is where the barley's produced. This is what's happened to barley production in the U.S. from our high out here in 1985 being about the highest year where our government required us to seed barley. So we had to seed barley on our farms. In 1996, this is when, the, when, when our farm programs dictated that we could plant whatever we wanted on our farms. And since then, the, the, the slide has been substantial. Now the producers can seed whatever they like on their acres. There's no requirements. So it's been a steady decline ever since. And we're losing 312,000 acres per year since 1987 in the U.S. A lot of it has to do with the profitability, of course, of the crop. That's what you've been hearing here the whole time we've, we've been here this morning. It, it doesn't matter if it's the finance people or the malting people. It all boils down to money at the end of the day. And it's what, what's, what's going to be most profitable on our farm. The farms in North Dakota now are pretty much at the point where we have about 50% of a, of a cereal type base. So that's going to be, be determined between wheat or barley or, or crop like that. Uh, the soybeans and corn are typically going to be just half of the acres. Uh, and then, of course, there's going to be the, the more um, profitable crops in there, like the canolas. Uh, they'll, you'll go up to your rotations. In Canada, you're going to see, of course, more of the canola probably than the soybeans. But that said, Manitoba is going to have uh, nearly a million acres or maybe more over a million acres of soybeans this year in Manitoba, which would have been unheard of, you know, five years ago or so. It's going to become a huge crop there as well. So through all of this, we try to score these crops in different ways so that we can determine the level of risk. And that helps us determine then if we want to sign contracts or not. And this is kind of how we do that. With the wheat, there's, there's some risk. We, we've got that, that, that dawn issue that we always have to keep an eye on. But we have a futures market to use, and there's some things that we can do so that we can manage that risk and get a score of about 13. Cor I mean, this is just the minimum. You get the standard things. There's really nothing you can add to that. It's very easy to market. There, it's just it's totally easy to do that. And then we look at the total scores. Barley rate's very high. That doesn't mean we don't want to grow it. That just means we have to be compensated for our risk. That's all that matters. The acres are going to be consolidated, and they're going to continue to be in North Dakota, Montana, and Idaho. Colorado and those places and Wyoming are going to be limited acres for the contract growers, but the bulk of the, the, bulk of the production is still going to be in those three states. I can, I, that's where the malt plants are. That's where the infrastructure is at. And provided there's fair pricing, I think they'll continue to get some of the supply. The proximity to the prairies in Canada where they can get the extra supply, it's right there. It just makes, uh, uh, I think, location sense to do that. And uh, again, I think uh, a lot of these, these, uh, these issues are going are, are gonna to stay, but they're going to be manageable provided we can work out the price scenario that it's competitive with the corn and soybeans. The continued education has to go on between the buyers and, and, and the, uh, the new people introduced to agriculture and, of course, the new companies that are investing in the malting and brewing industry. And that's going to have to be an ongoing uh, uh, education process.